Dennis, and I'm the Division Chief for External Relations and Education this year. And on behalf of the entire Board of Directors, I want to thank you for your support, for being here. Spirit of Community is this year's thing. Barbara's going to talk about it in a moment, but I really do feel like everyone in this room is so much a part of our community, and all of you are an integral part of it. So I know this is in particular for the media, but the media is so important to our community, and so are each of you. And then, from a personal note, um, for the media that is here, you guys have been really kind of this year, so thank you. <laughs> you know who you are. Um, so, to get started, why don't we start with a, a big shout out for our Viva La Fiesta on the count of three. Ready for that? Yeah. Yes. All right. One, two, three. Viva for hosting us today. If you haven't been in the saddle room or the carriage museum, please take some time to check it out. It's very lovely. And does anybody know how many days until Fiesta? So that is coming, but more importantly, I get to make all the introductions. So with that, I want to start off by thanking our mayor, Kathy Morello, for being here. 319 La Presidenta, Barbara Carroll. Um, Raina Del Mar, part of the 126 Native Daughters of the Golden West. Here's our this year's Saint Barbara, Debbie Fidello. too much of Barbara Slender, but she's also our great Grand Marshal. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, I was going to introduce Dacia and Riley Harwood, uh, Honorary Presidentes. They'll be here in later. And we have several members of our Board of Directors here. Can you please raise your hand if you are on the Board of Directors? Woo! Very nice turnout. Thank you so much. representatives from Los Niños de las Flores who joined us today. Thank you for being here. And the students that knew that for this year, we are officially welcoming boys to the program. So thank you. We would have a Thank you for creating opportunities for people to cut loose and enjoy themselves and 
celebrate uh, summer. I'm looking forward to the pre-fiesta tea that's coming up. And also, um, being in the parade with Paloma, we get to ride together. And what was funny last year, uh, uh, Georgie, she had a, like a little electric fan or was battery or something, and I had the old-fashioned fan, and we were laughing at ourselves. So um, we'll have fun and stay cool, right? Um, but really, I'm, I'm at your service, uh, Old Spanish Days aboard, and uh, proud that our public works and all the city employees are getting ready to you know, support, close the streets, open the streets, uh, be there in support of this wonderful celebration. Bravo, brava. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you all so much for being here. As you know, Fiesta is a very important part of our community and it has been, as Angelique said, for 95 years because this is the 95th anniversary of Old Spanish Days. We started in 1924 and we've been going strong ever since. Fiesta was created as a way to draw people to Santa Barbara to support the local economy and the Board of Old Spanish Days has enjoyed really wonderful success in reaching that goal every year. We draw tens of thousands, potentially up to 100,000 people to our parade when uh, watching it live and on TV. Um, we bring in tens of thousands of people into uh, the community that attend the Mercados, that attend Noches, that attend Pequena. Um, we, we do a lot to drive the local economy and we're delighted to play that role each and every year. And it's wonderful to those of us on the board the way the traditions of Fiesta have been embraced by the people who live in our community as well as by all the visitors who come each and every year. Uh, we provide so much in the way of dance and music and food and free entertainment that it's a family-friendly festival that goes home for five days um, and, it, and it really does draw people in uh, to experience the wonderful beauty and spirit of Santa Barbara. One of the things that we're also proud about accomplishing is when these visitors come, they're staying in our local hotels, they're eating in local restaurants, they're also visiting local attractions like the museums, the harbor, um, the, the mission, the courthouse, they're taking the winery tours. So we're doing a lot to really drive the local economy through the summer. It's not hard to get people to come to Santa Barbara, but we're one of the reasons that they love to come back so often. And we're, we're proud of the role that we play there. We're also uh, proud of the role that we play as a platform for other area local nonprofits. Um, a lot of people know this, but it always surprises me how many people don't. The two Mercados that Old Spanish Days supports, the one at Delaguerra Plaza and the one in Mackenzie Park, support up to 40 local nonprofits. And for many of those nonprofits, the fundraising they do the week of Fiesta is the only funds that they have for a particular program. And for several of these nonprofits, it makes the difference between keeping their doors open and providing services to this community for another year. So that's a really important function that Old Spanish Days plays, and I hope it's something that gets a lot of attention this year um, because this community does need a lot of help and relies a, a lot on our social services that come through the nonprofits. And so every time you go to Mercado de la Guerra and de la Guerra Plaza, or Mercado del Norte at Mackenzie Park and you have a taco or a torta, you are actually giving back to your community. So please come out, eat, and enjoy yourself and make a difference in your community. Every little bit of it helps each and every one of those nonprofits. I get asked a lot about how I chose the theme, spirit of community for this year. And when I knew I was gonna be La Presidenta, I spent some time thinking about why I love Fiesta and what it means to me. And one of the things that resonates most over and over and keeps bringing me back into the trenches year after year is the way you see the entire community come together to participate, volunteer their time, their talent, and in some cases your blood, sweat, and tears, literally, um, to make Fiesta happen. There are so many volunteers and so many participants that make this festival possible, and it's really wonderful when you can step back and appreciate what's happening. We have community organizations like the Native Daughters participating by bringing a St. Barbara and by participating in the, uh, in the um, parade. We have the local dance community um, represented today beautifully by Sofia Cordero and Paloma Valenzuela 
But every year there's a spirit and a junior spirit, a fiesta. Every year the various dance studios, whether they're folklorico, Spanish classical, or uh, flamenco, provide free entertainment all over town, at the mission, at the courthouse, in the malls, on the streets, at private events everywhere. You can, you can find the dancing and the music. You have the food, which I've already talked about, and the mercados. You have the parades, the pageantry, the beauty of it all. Um, it's all driven by volunteers, the musicians, the dancers. And those are all the people that you see on the surface, and that's the part of Fiesta that everyone's familiar with. The things that you see on stage or the floats as they go by in the parade or the people on their beautiful horses with their beautiful saddles intact, examples of which are in the room with us. But what people don't really see are the thousands and thousands of volunteer hours that go behind the scenes. Old Spanish Days is run by a board of volunteers. Um, there's a lot of us, I mean, it's a big board. There's 35 directors, and we have up to 25 uh, associate directors, and we have um, an active group of past presidents who all donate their time and energy to organize the different committees and events of Old Spanish Days, from the parties to the mercados, to the parade, to the rodeo. Um, but in addition to our board, there are hundreds of people who donate their time and talent to building the food booths at the Mercados. They don't go up by themselves. You, there's, there are people who pull the thorns off the flowers that the, flower, the Los Niños will be handing out during the parade and at the retirement homes. There are people who put together the flower arrangements that go on the floats and on the carriages. There are people who put up the tents that you see everywhere. And then there are the people who come around afterwards and take it all down and clean it all up. And without those people, Fiesta wouldn't happen each and every year. It's amazing to me, and, and being in leadership for Old Spanish Days, I'm, I'm in the position of having to see all the, this million little threads come together to form one festival, and that's happening right now. All the threads are supposed to be coming together right now, um, and it's going to happen one way or another, even if we drop a thread or two. But um, uh, so it's, it, it gets a little bit tense right now because there are, there are millions of moving parts that are going on right now. But each and every year, the community rallies and makes it happen. And it's a wonderful celebration of this community each and every year when it does. Um, as Presidenta, I have the perks of naming the honoraries. I also got to pick the Grand Marshal. I got to make the poster and pin. I got to pick the theme, and I got to write the proclamation. You can see my proclamation on our old Spanish Days website, sbfiesta.org. You can get all kinds of information there, including my proclamation. And I've already explained why I wanted the theme that I did. And it ties into why I picked the poster and pin that I did. I wanted images that evoke memories of Fiesta and would remind anyone who had ever attended one of our events about the excitement and fun of Fiesta. So hopefully everybody agrees and enjoys the poster and pin for this year. Um, but, but they represent special memories to me, the parade being chief among them. For my honoraries this year, I also wanted to stick on theme, and that's why I picked the people that I did. Um, Daisha and Riley Harwood have been involved in the community for many, many years. Daisha was a founding member of the Fiesta Ranchera Committee uh, a dozen years ago, um, and Fiesta Ranchera has turned into one of the most successful fundraisers for the Spanish Days. Riley Harwood, I'm sure almost everybody in the room knows him, um, but he's a retired police officer, so he has dedicated himself to this community for many, many years. He only retired last fall. And this year, um, the Harwoods, in addition to volunteering their time and their talents and their children, um, helping put on some of our events, um, that this year they get to be dance parents, but they're also going to get to enjoy Fiesta as honored guests at each one of our events, and I'm really happy to be able to offer that to them. My other two honorary president days um, are on vacation right now. Um, Tom and Denise Peterson. Uh, Tom is a volunteer all over the place. He volunteers here at the Carriage Museum and the Historical Museum and pretty much any place else that he's asked. 
He's also a local equestrian, and he's extremely knowledgeable about all of the horses and carriages um, that are in our parade. And for the last several years, he's provided color commentary for KEYT um, during the live broadcast of the parade. So when you hear somebody talking about, well, this is this type of horse, or this carriage was built in whatever year, um, that's Tom Peterson. And uh, his wealth of knowledge is amazing. But uh, Tom and Denise are our local equestrians. They have a ranch in Lompoc, and they've participated in our parade for many years, and they've given back in very real and meaningful ways. So that's, that's why I chose the four honoraries that I did. The other person that I got to choose was our parade grand marshal, and it was such an easy choice this year to select the very first spirit of Fiesta, Leah Parker. Um, <laughs> Um, this is the 70th anniversary of the Spirit of Fiesta, so that's a huge milestone for Leah, but also for us. So I'm really pleased that I was able to ask her, and I was delighted when she accepted. Um, so you'll get to see Leah Parker in the parade, in a carriage, having a good time. Um, she didn't want to be on horseback with me, so. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get her safely into a carriage, and she's going she's gonna to enjoy it. And as far as I'm concerned, she can be in any parade that she wants from now on. Um, the, the role of Spirit of Fiesta, as Leah can attest, and as I'm sure Sophia and Paloma will be able to shortly, is a very demanding one, uh, but also very fun and, and enjoyable, and it's very meaningful to the people in our community, particularly those involved in the dance community. It gives people um, someone to look up to and to aspire to become. And so the young ladies that we have this year, Sophia and Paloma, they've been excellent role models, and if you have the opportunity to ask them afterwards, they'll tell you how long they've aspired to fill these roles um, because they were inspired by prior spirits and junior spirits of Fiesta. So, so that's just another way that Fiesta touches on so many hearts and in so many ways in our community. And um, Stephanie's going to be coming up and talking about our sponsors in just a moment. Um, and I want to take just a brief moment, since they gave me the microphone, to um, thank the city of Santa Barbara. Kathy Mario is here with the, um, from city council. But, um, and she mentioned it, all the different departments and divisions that go into making Fiesta possible, <laughs> let alone happen, but, but actually just possible. And when you think about it, we need the cooperation of the people, as she said, who closed the streets down and opened the streets afterwards, who put up the no parking signs three days in advance, the ones who, who trim the trees and make sure that we're not having construction on the parade route or at one of our venues. It's, um, we do a tremendous amount of coordinating with the city. Um, we meet with them five, six uh, times over a month and a half. Um, coordinating with all the different departments and divisions to make sure that all of the requirements that we need are requested and that all of the requirements they're requiring are met. And it's a very cooperative and collegial uh, relationship um, and it's been going on for many, many years. We've worked hard, the city has worked hard, and, uh, and it's flourishing. And, but that wouldn't happen if everybody wasn't invested in making Fiesta possible. I also want to give a shout out to the County of Santa Barbara because they play a similar role with uh, the Noches de Ronde show that happens at the courthouse. Without the support of the county, um, we would run into significant troubles with the courthouse um, because that is a very busy and popular venue. Um, as a lawyer, people are working there every day. Um, trying to put on a show around that is, is a logistical issue. Um, and, and we're very appreciative of the support of the County Board of Supervisors. We're also appreciative of the support of the City of Goleta because without their support, the Fiesta Ranchera event wouldn't happen, as I mentioned. It is one of our best fundraisers. Our fundraisers are how all of our free entertainment and free events happen. Um, so when we don't charge you cover charge to go watch the dancers at Mercado de la Guerra, that's because we're, we've got Fiesta Ranchera and Dignitarios happening. Um, you know, the reason we can have a parade is because we have these events. Um, I also want to give a shout out, since, since I'm here, to the mission. Father Larry's still not here, but um, <laughs> I, I'm maybe not coming. But, um, but without the mission, again, Fiesta Pequeña would not be possible. Um, and that show is beloved by this entire community. And again, thanks to UKEYT for um, broadcasting it so those who don't show up in person are able to enjoy the festival. 
Um, Angelique mentioned that she has a schedule of events that she's going to be handing out, and it has all kinds of good details in it for you. Um, every year we're asked what we're doing differently, um, and as all of you who live here know, people love their fiesta tradition, so we try not to change them too much. Um, we try to make them a little bit fresh, a little bit new each and every year, but we, don't, uh, we try not to uh, upset the apple cart, if you will. But one thing I am very pleased to announce um, that is a little bit different this year is that our Flower Girl program is now known as Los Niños de las Flores. And that is because we officially recognize boys and girls in the program. And um, as Angelique mentioned, we have, I believe, 138 this year, which does include, uh, I believe, eight jovencitos. Jovenes. Sorry, I'm still learning the lingo. It's new to all of us. This is a, this is a new announcement, but the, the Jovenes are new this year. We still have our flower girls, the Jovenes, and our Las Señoritas. Jovencitos. I'm ruining it. Sorry. Jovencitos. Somebody else will, will reinforce that message after me to make sure it's clear. Um, but we are very delighted to be able to do this. Uh, we, we did have boys in the program in the past, but it was usually just an unofficial thing where a sibling was included along with the flower girl, but, but this time from now on, we're officially recruiting uh, boys and girls for that program. Well, thanks again, everybody, for coming. It's uh, great to see so many familiar, smiling faces uh, in the audience. I'm going to keep it brief because um, Barbara and Mayor Mario touched on it. Um, 95 years of Old Spanish Days Fiesta, and we've had partners like the city of Santa Barbara from the very first year. It wouldn't be possible without our collaborative partners. So I was just gonna come up and thank uh, the city of Santa Barbara again, the county of Santa Barbara, and the city of Goleta. I also want to uh, thank the thousands of volunteers that come out and make uh, Old Spanish Days Fiesta possible. We have volunteer opportunities available from everybody um, from helping with the parade to working at the Mercados. So if you're interested in becoming a Fiesta volunteer, uh, go to sbfiesta.org. And uh, in closing, I just, uh, what a beautiful theme, spirit of community, because it really does take a community to put on an old Spanish days uh, Fiesta event. And uh, I am super excited, 19 days away, and I can't wait. So, <laughs> viva la Fiesta. Thank you, Angelique. Viva la fiesta! Viva la fiesta! Good morning. Thank you all for being here. And um, viva la fiesta one more time. I might need these glasses here. <laughs> As your second vice president of Old Spanish Days, I have the privilege of thanking our sponsors and amazing partners who make events in this community possible coming up in the next few weeks. Fiesta brings together a broad section of the community as we come together to celebrate the history and culture of our region and to appreciate and enjoy where we live, truly a spirit of community. I'd like to thank our partners, the City of Santa Barbara, thank you Mayor Murillo, and the entire city. The, the County of Santa Barbara, the City of Goleta, and our beautiful Old Mission Santa Barbara for their generous support of Old Spanish Day since 1924. 95 years. Let's give us a round of applause. I'd also like to thank our caring and generous sponsors of Fiesta 2019. Without the support of our sponsors, the free events such as Fiesta Pequeña, Mercado de la Guerra, Mercado del Norte, Noches and Tardes de Ronda, and our wonderful historical parade would not be possible. Giordano's, our longest sponsor of Fiesta, 95 years. Wow. Fox Communications, Impulse Advanced Communications, KEYT3, thank you once again for filming Pequena and also our parade. Marburg Industries, Bella Vista Designs Incorporated, the Hilton Santa Barbara Beachfront Resort, where we will be holding the El Presidente or La Presidenta party July 28th. Get all your tickets. We'd love to see all of you there. Union Bank, American Riviera Bank, Bank of California, Bartlett Pringle and Wolf LLP, Community West Bank, Montecito Bank and Trust, and the San Inez Band of Chumash Indians. And we'll ask to also thank all of our other sponsors who are listed in your brochure. Thank them 
and when you see them on the street during Fiesta, proudly wearing their sponsor badges, thank them very much for helping Old Spanish Days put together this beautiful event that we all know as Fiesta. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I got a few years of service with Old Spanish Days. We go back to 76 and 93 on the board, 2013 El Presidente. Uh, with the rodeo, we go back to the roots of what our economy was back in the 1800s in the cattle industry. That's all there was here before all these people showed up. And <laughs> concrete highways and everything else. We used horses to get around. And uh, in that line, we've got a couple honored vaqueros this year, uh, go back to fifth generation. John and uh, Brandy Branquino. Brandy is a uh, Luton family, Luton Den Bell. They owned uh, several large land grants in the area here. You go out to uh, Sandpiper and uh, Bacar, that was all the property where she grew up on. And her dad, uh, K.Y.T. Paul and Terry ought to know this. You ever remember Bill Huddy, my buddy, and Gene Forsell? It was old man Luton, and he was Brandy's father, past president of Old Spanish Day, owned K.Y.T. And he used to throw a heck of a party out there in the, in the oil field before they built the golf course and everything. You wiggle out through everything to the beach there and have a heck of a time on the 4th of July. But uh, we bring quite a bit of history with John and Brandy Branquino. Uh, Thursday night we'll have our normal uh, PBR bull riding. Friday and Saturday nights we've got uh, full-blown rodeo, mutton busting and everything. The kids four to six years old. Uh, under 60 pounds out there playing on the sheep, having a good time, eating a little dirt. Uh, Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Friday all day long, uh, more so in the morning, the kids events, junior roping and everything going on. You want to see a four or five year old on up to a 17 year old rope, they do it. A heck of a job and them five, six, seven year olds can handle a rope. You want, you want to see how they catch their parents or vice versa. <laughs> and uh, mutton busting, but that's uh, about all I've got at the moment. Just uh, think about our honored vaqueros this year in the Branquino family. Thank you. All right, well that concludes the speakers. Oh, Barbara, you wanna say one more thing? Uh, Barbara's gonna say one more thing, come on up. Perk to be able to talk twice, but I also forgot to do the PSA when I was thanking everybody. So there's actually a reason for it. Um, I was talking about how we work so cooperatively with the city, and it is something that we really strive to do, and this is an important issue for the city, especially this year. Um, and the, the issue is the confetti. Um, the city has been running a program about how confetti is litter. And we want everybody to realize that while the paper aspects and the eggshells themselves are biodegradable, the other contents that people tend to use, the mylar, the sequins, the glitter, they're plastic and they are not. And they can be harmful to the environment um, and to marine mammals if, because they go into the, the confetti goes into the creeks, which goes directly into the ocean. So uh, no one is asking people to forego cascarones this year, um, but we are asking people to educate themselves about what it is that they're using and to be mindful of the situation that they're creating. That confetti goes everywhere and it lasts. Um, and so that, that's just something we're, that we're starting to work on and we're going to come up with a resolution for it. Um, but that is an important message to get out there this year. No more Mylar. Okay, thank you. And that was an excellent PSA. No more Mylar. We totally agree. Okay, so now let's talk events. Because there are lots of them. Um, I do have handouts. Eric, do you want to help me pass these out or where? Um, okay. So let's talk events. So first up, costume sale tomorrow, right here in our parking lot from 9 a.m. to 1. Please be there. You're bound to find something to wear in all the wonderful events that we're going to be happening. 
Um, also want to mention that Project Fiesta is back at the Santa Barbara Historical Museum, so it is now open, and they are actually offering free admission the week of Fiesta, which is very generous, so thank you for that. They've got vintage posters, costumes, historical photographs. If you haven't seen it, I would go check it out. So, brochure. Has everybody picked up a brochure yet? No. All right. We've got tons and tons of brochures. Barbara's Proclamation is actually in here. <laughs> and there's a map and tons of information about events. Um, one thing that we did do slightly differently this year is that we did add events that OSD doesn't necessarily produce. Um, things like Courthouse Legacy Foundation is having a party on Saturday night on August 2nd. It's a fundraiser for their nonprofit. It's fabulous. It's kind of a they're in the mural room. It overlooks not just Saranda. It's a really nice event. So things like that are now in our brochure. Same with Fiesta Finale and some others. So um, do pick up our brochure. Take extras. Give them to family, friends, whoever you want to hand them out to. So now for the packet. Besides the brochure, what I put together is dates to remember. This lists every single date of every official OSD event. The date, the time, and the location and um, highlighted a couple of things like the Recepcion del Presidente on the 28th and Diggs. As Barbara mentioned, those are two fundraisers that are coming up. We'd love for your, your support and please also invite your friends and family. Um, next is the Fiesta Pack Sheet. I had a lot of fun putting this together. I had to get, I can't tell you how many different sources to collect this information, um, but it has some really cool stuff in it. We've got 41 parade entries. I'm also giving you the parade lineup in that packet. Um, we've got 24 wagons, 20 riding groups, including 12 charo groups, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got 34 vendors for the Arts and Crafts Show, and I think we're still getting more vendors in, so that's as of yesterday. Um, some highlights for this year, we already talked about Los Niños um, Grandstand and Reserve Seating. We did that for the first time last year. It turned out really well, so we really want to promote that this year, the Grandstand Seating. Um, and then, for those of you who know David Gonzalez, he's a retired sergeant with the police department. He's going to sing the national anthem at our ribbon cutting. So, doesn't awesome. it miss? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. He's coming back. Um, there's some other photo ops here. Um, let's just talk briefly about Los Niños de los Flores because there is a whole fact sheet on this. Um, they've been doing this for 71 years. They've got um, flower girls, los jovencitos and Los Señoritas um, this year. And there are 113 flower girls and 17 Los Señoritas. So really great group. Um, over 50% of them are participating for the first time. And some of them have participated for more than eight years. So really love the program. It's super great. Um, on July 30th, they will be visiting 25 nursing homes in 10 different groups. So they're going to be very busy if um, the media would like to cover. We do have three homes that are willing to have photographs taken. They also will be at Oak Park at noon that day for pizza for anyone who wants to come and check them out. Um, I've got bios on the spirits in here. I've got parade reserve seating information. This colorful sheet is the um, lineup for the parade. And then, as Josiah mentioned, there is also a um, press release on the um, honored vaqueros that he spoke about uh, already. And then, um, lastly, I did include the information on a couple of events. And I also included um, Floriconto. And the reason I included Floriconto, this is an event that occurs every Friday at 7 o'clock, right before Noche Seronda. And it's an hour-long presentation of the original songs and dances of Old Spanish Days. This harkens back 180 years. It's produced by Aaron Graffy, who is our local historian and a longtime board member. Um, you know, if you really want to know the history of our true Old Spanish Days, that's the event to go to. It's also the only one of its kind in California. So it's very unique, and we get it here. It's pretty cool. Um, so with that, that concludes our press conference. Um, all of the speakers are available for interviews. And I, once again, just want to thank you for being here, and viva la fiesta.